2015 was a big year in video gaming and in video game journalism. And we've looked at a lot of stories over the years to give you the top 15 most important gaming news stories of 2015. The biggest controversy in gaming history has been going on for over a year with active discussions continuing online, and the discussion has not let up. The debate on ethics in gaming journalism, women in the gaming industry, and artistic freedoms has grown louder and has been mentioned in various forms of media. The controversy also took center stage at its first live debate in 2015. At Forge in the Future, a society professional journalists event, two panels would discuss what Gamergate is and if the gaming press is ethical. The panels were titled SPJ Airplay. Nine panelists were brought on to represent various parts and issues in the Gamergate controversy. Representing the pro side was Mark Seb of the Action Points YouTube channel, Ash Scow of the Washington Examiner, Mal Yiannopoulos and Alon Bakari of Breitbart.com, Kathy Young of Reason, and Christina Hoff Summers of the American Enterprise Institute. Representing a non-Gamergate side and also representing journalism were Lynn Walsh, a journalism ethics expert, and the secretary treasurer of the Society of Professional Journalists, and Ren Laforme, a teacher from the Pointer Institute for Media Studies. An additional panelist, Derek Smart, an independent game developer, was representing a neutral side of the debate. The first panel was the most civil, and some important issues were brought up, such as ethical violations in the gaming press. The second panel would turn into an argument and was interrupted by a bond threat. We would like to disclose that Game Journalism Network was present at SPJ Airplay, and I was asked to act as a temporary moderator for the event. We are also in process of planning the next Airplay. The Gamergate controversy has asked many for video gaming journalism outlets to update or change their ethics policy. Changes were made to sites such as The Escapist, Destructoid, and IGN. Kotaku and Polygon would even make changes to their ethics policies as well. Both Kotaku and Polygon were under fire due to their staff members for having conflicts of interest with indie game developers by funding their Patreons and not disclosing that information in their articles. The change was first mentioned on Kotaku on a blog post made by the Kotaku editor-in-chief Stephen Tutillo, stating, We also agree that any funding to developers through services such as Patreon introduces needless potential conflicts of interest and are therefore nixing any such contributions by our writers. Polygon, however, stated that they would not stop their writers' ability to contribute financially to game developers while writing about them or their projects. The updates initially started in 2014 but continued into 2015 and are still happening on various gaming journalism sites. Additionally, many independent gaming sites and blogs have started their own ethics policies. Whether your thoughts on Gamergate are about conflicts of interest in gaming journalism or women in gaming, people are still talking about this controversy and will continue talking about it into 2016. This year, China lifted its ban on video game consoles. The ban started in 2000 by the Chinese Cultural Ministry. The ban was enacted to shield Chinese youth from the fear that video games could corrupt them. The lift on the ban means that consoles like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One can be sold to new markets, generating a predicted income of 22.2 billion US dollars according to research from New Zoo. While companies will be able to sell video game consoles to the Chinese public, video games themselves will need to be approved by the Chinese government for official release, so don't expect games like Fallout 4 to be released in China. Announced at E3 2015, Shenmue 3 was a game that was stuck in development hell since 2002. Shenmue creator Yu Suzuki announced at E3 that Sega had licensed the rights to Shenmue to his game development company WiseNet, and that they were in development of Shenmue 3 for the PlayStation 4 and Microsoft Windows. Suzuki also announced at E3 that a Kickstarter campaign to crowdfund the game was live. The campaign met its goal of $2 million in under 8 hours, and at the end of the campaign it raised over $6 million, making it the highest funded video game and the 6th highest funded campaign in Kickstarter history. Crowdfunding for the game resumed on September 17th on its official website using PayPal. The game is set for release in December 2017. Phil Spencer, the head of the Xbox division at Microsoft, announced at E3 that the Xbox One would gain a backwards compatibility update to many Xbox 360 games. The backwards compatibility would be released through a dashboard update. The update would also include an updated interface called the new Xbox One Experience and integration with Windows 10. 
The dashboard update, which allowed for backwards compatibility, was released on November 12th. If you were to ask gamers to choose which game they would want a remake of, chances are that they will say Final Fantasy VII. During the Sony press conference at E3 2015, Square Enix confirmed that they were in production of a PlayStation 4 remake of the game. Final Fantasy VII Remake is directed by Tetsuya Nomura, who is also the director of the film Final Fantasy VII Advent Children and is in charge of development for the Kingdom Hearts series. Dead Realm, a multiplayer survivor horror game, was designed for the growing Let's Play style videos as seen on YouTube and Twitch. But controversy rose when YouTubers Tom Cassell and Adam Montoya released Let's Plays for the game without disclosing that they were financially involved in the development of Dead Realm, and not stating that the Let's Plays were in fact advertisements. Their actions were a violation of the Federal Trade Commission, and weeks later the FTC released a report on an Xbox One marketing campaign organized by Machinima in 2013. In said report, the FTC ruled that Machinima had engaged in deceptive advertising. Machinima paid YouTubers to give the Xbox One favorable coverage about the console without disclosing a financial agreement between the two. In December, the FTC released strict guidelines on native advertising, which also includes native advertising in video games and online media. Two games came under fire from critics for sexual content, prompting game developers to either make changes in the game or not to release the game to Western audiences. Capcom Street Fighter V, which is in development and in beta, received complaints over in-game characters Armika's game animation, which included a butt slap during her super move, Cammy's player entrance, and the body physics of female characters. Yoshidori Uno, the game's producer, admitted in a recent interview with J.O.L. Jugos that the changes were deemed necessary in order to make Street Fighter V accessible to as broad an audience as possible. Quote, We want the professional players and the casual fans of the series to return, but we also want to reach those who have never even touched a fighting game. So we can't have something in the game that makes people think this is not acceptable. We won't be able to remove everything that could offend someone, but our goal is, at least, to reduce that number as much as possible so they think... Okay, there is this issue here, but it's within the limits. We want that everyone can play and enjoy without worrying about anything else. Koei Tecmo's Dead or Alive volleyball spin-off franchise, DOA Extreme 3, received criticism when asked on social media by fans if the game was going to be released to Western audiences. A representative from Koei Tecmo stated that the game will not be released in Western markets due to issues with the representation of women in video games and choosing not to deal with it. Koei Tecmo made an official statement on their website days later stating that the game will only be released in Asian territories, but an official English-Asian version of the game is available for pre-order for Westerners to purchase through PlayAsia.com. PlayAsia received some backlash from critics asking for them to not sell the game, but they are still continuing to sell the game with pre-orders. Created by Chris Roberts, known for the Wing Commander series, Cloud Imperium's Star Citizen was slated for a 2014 release, but the game is still in development, and is still raising money for development. Many of the game's backers and investors have been dissatisfied with the game's progress, and have been growing impatient to the point where they are asking for refunds. Cloud Imperium initially denied refunds, but gave a few to some backers. Derek Smart was one backer who was able to receive a refund. Smart is an independent game developer, and probably the most vocal critic of Star Citizen, has asked for the Federal Trade Commission to investigate Star Citizen, Cloud Imperium, and previous and ongoing crowdfunding campaigns. As of December, Cloud Imperium has raised over $104 million to develop the game. Another bit of controversy that hit Star Citizen was when Liz Finnegan of The Escapist reported that former employees of Cloud Imperium anonymously claimed that Cloud Imperium's marketing director, Sandy Gardner, refused to hire various protected classes because they would be harder to fire. They would also claim that Roberts and his wife had been embezzling millions of dollars from the company, which is about to go bankrupt, despite having been crowdfunded a sum of more than $90 million as of the Escapist's original report. Roberts posted a rebuttal on the game's website and posted a letter threatening legal action if the Escapist doesn't retract the article and apologize. The Escapist stood by their article. The next three important stories involved Konami, Kojima, and Sony. Konami throughout the summer announced that it was only going to focus on mobile gaming, 
and that gambling machines were going to be its top priority because of changes of gambling laws in Japan. But Konami followed up stated that it still believed in console gaming. Konami then delisted itself from the New York Stock Exchange claiming that the delisting was a move to save the company some money. But the biggest bit of news from the Konami camp came from the cancellation of the highly anticipated game Silent Hills. The game was set to star Norman Reddus and a directorial collaboration with Guillermo del Toro and Hideo Kojima. Kojima and Konami would also have other issues throughout the year. In March, Konami removed Hideo Kojima's name and Kojima Productions branding from the Metal Gear Solid website and promotional materials as well. This prompted many Kojima fans to place Kojima's name on various Metal Gear Solid 5 material on their own accord. Konami also renamed Kojima Productions Los Angeles to Konami Los Angeles Studio. After the release of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, rumors began to heavily circulate that Kojima and Konami had parted ways. At the Game Awards ceremony in early December, host Jeff Knightley stated that Konami's lawyers had blocked Kojima from attending the event to collect an award for Best Action Adventure. Kojima would officially state that he had left Konami and announced a new partnership with Sony. The new project would be titled Kojima Productions. The death of Satoru Iwata sent shockwaves not just in Nintendo, but in the entire gaming world. The Nintendo of America CEO and president of Nintendo passed away on Saturday, July 11, 2015, at the age of 55. Iwata became the fourth president of Nintendo in 2002, and was the first president not related to the Yamuchi family through blood or marriage since the company's founding as a playing card company in 1889. During Iwata's tenure as the president, he helped revitalize the handheld gaming market with the development of the Nintendo DS and pushed for the development of motion-based video games through the Wii Gaming Council. Iwata would also take over the role of Nintendo of America CEO from Tetsumi Kimishima, who was promoted to the managing director of Nintendo and serves as both the board of Nintendo of America and Nintendo company as a whole. In 2015, Iwata put pressure on focusing and growing the evolving Nintendo mobile gaming market, even agreeing to cut his yearly salary in half to support his staff as they venture in this emerging market. Tatsumi Kimishima would be appointed the new president of Nintendo on September 16, 2015. On my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer, but in my heart, I am a gamer. And the last item on this list is a story that is recently developed, but we felt that this is one of the most important stories of 2015, and possibly the scariest. Sesame Credit is a new social networking system in China that measures how good of a citizen you are. Tencent, the parent company of Riot Games, and Alibaba are the companies that jointly run and develop Sesame Credit. By analyzing the data from your social media and what you purchase online, your score will be affected. For example, if you post a link to a positive news story about China from one of their state-sponsored news agencies or purchase native Chinese goods that will help the Chinese economy, your score will go up. However, if you post an article about the Chinese economy crash from a Western news outlet or import foreign goods, your score could go down. While at first it sounds harmless, your score can have real-world consequences, both good and bad, in China. The higher a person's score, they can have an easier time securing needed paperwork for a potential job or travel abroad. The lower a person's score, it could restrict the jobs you're allowed to apply for or make it tougher to apply for a loan of some kind. Having a lower score can also affect your friends who have higher scores. If you have a high score and are friends with someone who has a lower obedience score, you could lose points. And the lower score penalties are not currently in place, but there has been talk about having them implemented when the system becomes mandatory in 2020. One of the biggest fears with Sesame Credit is by employing a game-like format, the Chinese government will let people control their citizens through gamification and social peer pressure. And there you have it, the 15 most important gaming news stories of 2015. Here's to 2016 and stick with Game Journalism Network at gamejournalism.net or our official YouTube channel for more gaming news stories in 2016 and beyond. I'm Aaron Pabone, and have a good year.